I've bought the place about 18 years ago now and uh, I don't think I've ever been as excited as I am at the moment. New trainer in town, obviously that's given um, everybody a, a huge lift. And the numbers around here are a, a huge lift, so we're now training a, a real you know, chunky string of, of horses. And of course we're, we're on the, uh, the, well, just at the start of some big, big racing festivals. So yeah, exciting times. Um, there's a big spring in everybody's step at, at the moment and, uh, and looking forward, not just to the start of the season, but a new future. Well, it's enormously exciting. The first week here, it felt like a come of age. It felt like suddenly leaving school. It felt, my God, this is, this is what it's meant to feel like. Um, and I'm really enjoying being here, it's great. Michael's passion and enthusiasm um, was was a very convincing factor you know he's he is hugely ambitious for for manor house and um and to grow the yard he wants it to be one of the biggest yards in the country and that's my ambition as well so you can see behind me it's the most stunning glorious part of the world um it's a wonderful place to train it's a fantastic facility um when it came to it the only reason not to come was was the upheaval and it just didn't seem a good enough reason not to do it we've got we've got everything we could ask for um, fantastic veterinary facilities, swimming pool, lovely gallops, um, wonderful well-aired barns. Um, the horses are settled in great. Um, really very, very happy. Over time, I think I'm going to make it my, uh, my ambition to win every race at the, uh, at the May Festival. Probably the Chester Cup is, is, the, uh, is the most prestigious and uh, maybe even the hardest to win. So I think if we could uh, knock the hardest one off first, then that might be a, that might be a good start. But yeah, I think over time, um, maybe in the next 10, 15 years, we might be able to to uh, to, to win each of the races, and uh, that would be a, a nice set to complete. Solent Gateway had a um, he, he had a great reappearance at Epsom in the Great Metropolitan Handicap last week, um, and as a result, he avoids a penalty, which is disappointing because the penalty would have guaranteed to have got us into the race, or would have given, yeah, I think it would have guaranteed to get us into the race. Um, but he only needs eight to come out, and I think there's a decent chance that he might get in. Uh, Rajinsky, who won at uh, Ripon on Saturday, gets a three pound penalty, which puts him right up near the top of the weights. But that said, he doesn't have at this stage, provided one of the ones above him runs, doesn't have a massive weight, and he, um, he could very he could very easily go there. Have to discuss it with his owner and and see. Um, I'm not convinced it's his track, but then he's so tough and genuine that with a good draw and he's a strong travelling horse. So um, it'd be exciting. I've I've never had a runner in the Chester Cup. Um, it's one of those magical historical races. Fabulous trophy, um, and uh, and obviously important for this yard and important to this part of the world. So. Uh, to have two live chances in just, uh, just the start of our sixth week here, to be talking about two live chances for, for the Chester Cup is exciting. Um, and if we're very lucky, we'll get them both there. Dig 2 is conceivably going to the handicap, but I think Dig 2 will probably run either at Goodwood or Newmarket this week, um, which, would leave, uh, which would leave Ever Given probably to go to that race. He had a, had a very good year last year. Um, won over 200,000 in prize money, and uh, and he seems to he's showing all the signs that he's trained on. I think I think Chester will, will suit him. James Milner, of course, um, Liverpool player. He, uh, I was in contact with him, and he showed an interest in in owning uh, a horse with a few of the lads, and he went and got a group of them together, checked out who was interested, and uh, yeah, and half a dozen of them all all chipped in and left it to us to to go and buy one, so we went to the breeze up sales as it was. We saw quite a small uh, son of Kodiak, thought he'd be a, you know, an early runner for them, something to get them going, just to get them interested and get them to the racetrack. Um, little did we know that he was going to turn out to be this good. Um, and of course, he had a really successful two-year-old campaign, winning multiple races. And uh, yeah, it's a, a stuff of dreams, really. And, um, and the Liverpool lads that, that own him are all you know, really keen. They're on the WhatsApp messages all the time and, and asking about his progress and things. So first stop for the season is, is um, the D stakes at Chester. And then of course, if he, uh, if he runs well in that, then there's a Derby uh, engagement as well, which is quite stunning for, for the lads' his first horse to, to have a horse even spoken about in those terms is, uh, is great. But um, yeah, it's been a success story so far and long may that continue. Tyrrell's perhaps a tiny bit behind where they might be, but we have run two. We've run a nice filly called Glorious Angel, um, and she 
What really pleased me about her debut at Nottingham uh, nine days ago was that she was very smartly away from the stalls. She then was a little bit green mid-race before running on, finishing third. Um, so I hope that she'll have learned a lot from that. She'll, she'll do a piece of work towards the end of this week, and I would hope that that would, uh, would, would set her in very good stead to go to the, probably the Lily Agnes um, at uh, the Chester May Festival. This year is not going to be the be-all and end-all um, for us. Obviously, I've only, um, we've only been here five weeks. I think in the future we'll, we'll probably have the opportunity to really target it, but we'll definitely have runners every day this year, and uh, if we're lucky we might squeak a winner. <laughs>